You know what? This might actually be the easiest TV review I do all year. In fact, since we're shooting this on a Friday, I might just go home early. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Caleb Dennison and today we're doing a full-on review of the Sony A8G OLED TV. It's right down below the A9G and honestly the two are so stinking close I could almost just forge you to the A9G review and say, this one's cheaper. But there are a few differences and we wanna take a closer look at that. So let's just dive right in, shall we? So first of all, here is a link to our unboxing of this TV. We actually take it out of the box, get it all set up. You learn a little bit uh, about what makes this TV different than the A9G. But I'll point out the most important stuff right now. First of all is the design. With the A9G OLED, the more expensive one, it sits right above the entertainment stand, which looks really cool. It's almost as if it's just hovering there. Practically speaking, it's kind of a pain in the butt to move around because you can't get your fingers underneath it. But look, if you're gonna set it and forget it, maybe that's not such a big deal to you. Uh, the bezels on the A9G are infinitesimally smaller than the ones on the A8G, but as you can see here, really, really trim bezels, a very trim profile. It's a gorgeous TV. The biggest difference though is the stand. Now we have it oriented this way where the legs are pointing out as you can see, but uh, if you want to, you can flip it around so that the curved part of the stand, currently on the back of the TV, actually comes out front. I like the look of that better where the curved part is out front, but if you're gonna be setting up a sound bar with this TV, having the legs out like this makes more sense. Sony actually provides these little feet that you can put underneath your sound bar so that it raises just above these legs and fits nicely below the TV. You're gonna want a real trim sound bar though so that it doesn't creep up into the screen area. The other big difference is the remote. Uh, the A9G has a much nicer brushed metal remote uh, with a less dense layout of buttons. Uh, this is the old Sony remote as we've known it for years now. A couple more things you might want to know if you didn't already. It's an Android TV, uh, the Sony A8G, and as such, uh, you know, it can run a little bit on the sluggish side. Uh, you know, I'm pressing really, really fast and it takes a second to catch up. Android TV is a resource hog, uh, but you know what? It's so much better now than it was last year that I'm not gonna complain too much. Uh, the other thing you wanna know is that the screen is the speaker. So there's an actuator here and one on the other side that vibrate the screen to make sound. And that may not sound like it would sound great, but actually it does. One of the coolest things about it is if there's somebody over here talking, you actually hear the sound coming from the face that's doing the talking. Same with uh, sound effects like explosions. They come from wherever they are on the screen. There's a little subwoofer in the back that reinforces that, so you do get a fairly full sound, but you know, a TV of this quality probably deserves at least a sound bar, if not a full-on home theater system. Test pattern time, and you know what you should expect here. So we're looking for blooming around these white boxes in the corners. And uh, though you may see something like that through the camera and ultimately the screen you're watching this on, believe me when I say that there is no blooming. It's an OLED TV. The black pixels are perfectly black. The white boxes have very sharp lines around them. It's exactly what you would expect from an OLED. You see that again here. There is no bleed from the white boxes into the black boxes in this checkerboard pattern. It's just absolutely perfect. Those were the SDR patterns. Here we have the HDR version. And obviously you can see that the brightness went way, way up. So in SDR, you're looking at a, uh, almost 300 nits of peak brightness. Uh, you're getting closer to 600, 650 on a good day uh, when you're in HDR mode, which is not as high as some of the competition, but it's still plenty juicy. Grayscale in SDR looks great, exactly what we wanna see. Switch to HDR. What we notice is we lose a little bit of the dark gray on the left, and then on the right, you can see that the, the brights are a little bit blown out, and that's because this test pattern goes brighter than the TV is actually capable of producing. This is totally normal and what we're used to seeing. Now we've got a color pattern in standard dynamic range, and what we see is what I generally expect, especially from Sony. Out of box color, this is the cinema home mode, so that's a little bit brighter than the Cinema Pro mode. Looks great. Now that isn't to say that it could not use the help of a calibrator. Here it is in HDR mode, obviously much brighter. Uh, but what I notice here is that with a calibration, you could probably wrangle this thing into, oh, well, damn near perfect. Uh, but out of the box, it's great. So unless you're a video file, I think you're gonna be totally stoked with either the Cinema Home or Cinema Pro mode. Hey, look, we're doing something new. So I don't feel like we talk about the reflectivity of these screens enough. Uh, so we're gonna try this new test, which is a stress test, believe me. This is one of our powerful studio lights aimed right at the screen uh, from directly behind the viewing position. You would never have this at home, but it helps us 
kind of show what the anti-glare uh, does on these televisions. And I would actually give this Sony like a 9 or a 9.5. Uh, you'll see in future videos, uh, TVs that perform much worse, you're not going to see much better than this. So we're seeing actually quite a bit of diffusing of the light. Uh, and yeah, I'm impressed. When the TV is in a normal viewing situation, you really don't see much in the way of reflections unless the sun is coming in through your back window. So test patterns are great, right? Because they're objective and they're measurable. Subjectively though, I think that analysis is important. I mean, I'm looking at footage I've seen a hundred times. This is the Spears and Munsell UHD test disc. And what I'm seeing here is absolutely exemplary. It really comes down to Sony's processing. Uh, what you get with Sony's processing is toned down HDR highlights. So they're not as bright and punchy as say an LG OLED, but they preserve highlight detail, which I'm a big fan of. And also I feel like the HDR highlights here are plenty bright, especially against the perfectly black canvas. It's just fantastic. The colors are also very rich and vibrant. I credit that to Sony's processing as well. Overall, just a really, really balanced TV. You know, Sony strives to make this TV look as close as it can to its professional uh, $30,000 OLED monitors that Hollywood uses. And I've seen the two side by side. It does a great job. And I notice here, motion is also very good. This is a clip that has tripped up other sets. Uh, Sony's motion processing is excellent. It does not introduce any soap opera effect. Uh, it just looks very, very smooth uh, without having unnatural smoothness to it. Here's something else Sony processing is especially good at, cleaning up lossy compressed video. So we're streaming off of YouTube, something with this much blue in it, I expect to see some uh, macro blocking, a little bit of banding in the big sky scenes. And the Sony does a great job of cleaning all that up. Now, if you get right up on the TV, you can see a little bit of that noise, but when you sit at a normal distance, it's gone. Sony absolutely cleans it up better than virtually any other TV manufacturer out on the market right now. And that is crucial because most of us stream our content or watch cable and satellite. So let's check out cable and satellite. Ask and you shall receive. You guys have been wanting feedback on how the TVs perform with cable and satellite signals, which we know are really compressed and usually low resolution around 720p, unless you're lucky enough to be watching a 4K station. There's a saying, you can't polish a turd. And this is true even with a TV as great as the Sony. It can only do so much. It is attempting to clean up some of the dirtiness, but there are compression artifacts all over the place here. Luckily, you don't sit this close to a TV, so you don't notice it so much, but like, hey, real soap opera effect, right? I did notice with this television though that sports looked particularly good. The motion was good uh, and not too uh, flashy or stuttery as we've seen with some other televisions. So honestly, this is gonna be as good as it gets for satellite or cable. So let's put things into perspective, shall we? The Sony A9G, which I called the best TV of the year because it's just my favorite, uh, costs $3,800 for a 65 inch. The Sony A8G behind me is $1,300 less at just $2,500 just $2,500, yeah, it's a lot of money. The LG C9, by comparison, is also $2,500 for the 65-inch TV, so you've got some really good options under $3,000 for a 65-inch OLED, and that is awesome. My pick, though, is gonna have to be for the Sony. I love the A8G, I think it brings a lot of that Sony picture quality and processing that I talked about with really nice design. Android TV works well enough for me, so it's a win. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Hit me up in the comments down below. I'm sure you have something to say about this video, good or bad. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when we're coming out with a new video. And in the meantime, check out my review of the LG C9 OLED right over here.